Skip Pen. Right. Uh, and uh, just to introduce you, uh, Penny Arnold and Pat Byrne. Uh, Penny, uh, Pat is an animal communicator and uh, also wow. lots of interesting things. And she also, what we're going to talk about in a minute is something of her experiences of mercury poisoning, which would have seen her off the planet had she not had a fantastic homeopathic um, uh, doctor, for want of a better term. But I'm just going to uh, introduce uh, the, the whole shabu. And I just thought that it would be lovely to share some of our experiences because I have had such a fantastic experience with um, homeopathy. And uh, my maybe one day my uh, homeopathic friend who's long retired and doesn't want to go back into homeopathy, but she said she'll always be there to give me some advice. She might, we might even get her on. But at this moment, she's, she's not really into, into that. But I did tell her what uh, I was going to do, and I will put this out on YouTube eventually, and uh, she'll be able to feed back to me. So I'm, uh, although this is me as ETN, I'm going to call it the Latte Lounge, where we can choose a subject, <laughs> anyone we like, and we can chill out and relax and chat about what we think is important. So for me, I'm going to kick off with just a couple of instances, and then I want you ladies to uh, have the floor about the fantastic uh, healing that I had uh, from homeopathy. One of them was when I had very severe conjunctivitis and I was abroad. In fact, both of these occasions were when I was abroad in Spain. And uh, I was with uh, visiting my friend and I, uh, my homeopathic friend, and I had been looking after a friend's dog and I very rarely get anything wrong with my eye, but it was completely bloodied over, very painful, itchy, all that. Mm. And um, I said, oh my God, this is, this is just doing my head in. And she gave me one single solitary, solitary tablet. It was a platinum, I don't know what strength it was, but the moment it touched my tongue, I felt this stab as if somebody literally had stabbed me in my eye. I mm. went, uh, it caused a sharp intake of breath, but then from that, it, that it's like that that broke something. I know mm. the course of about four hours, it was about fifty percent better, and within a day or two, you'd never know it there at all. It was absolutely incredible. And when I said to her, "How did you possibly know that it would be that remedy?" She said, "Well, you know, most times um, homeopath homeopaths." treat the person, the whole person, that is, they know a bit about their history, so they've got an idea of their orientation and the kind of personality they are. She said, I know you, we're friends, so, you know, I just had this uh, intuitive thing, and mm -hmm. there you go. And the other time was when um, her daughter was getting married, and we were in Spain, and I didn't realize I'd got a broken tooth up right at the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, w I began to experience the most unbelievable pain and um, mm. I, and I just said to her I, I said I, I, I can't really do anything I said I'm just uh, in a state and it came on very quickly and she began treating <coughs> silica Pat you can mute your phone uh, your mic if you need to you know cough okay. or whatever um, and um, yeah so so she treated me with silica again I can't remember what the uh, strength was and it was every two hours um, for about a day and a half, and then it uh, tailored off to about, or tapered off to about once every four hours, and then five hours. And honestly, by by the end of the second day, if not a bit sooner, the pain had completely gone, but was again fifty percent gone. I mean, it was a white knuckle ride of pain, that terrible, mm -hmm. terrible thing. Mm -hmm. And then her, she's written a book uh, with a colleague and a friend. That's uh, only in, um, it's not in, in English, and I'm hoping that we can get that book, which is to do with the ancestral ego and the healing process through homeopathy. What a brilliant concept. Mm. Um, so we're hoping to get that book out there again. But this friend had um, co-authored it with her. And when she heard, you know, what had been happening with me, she joined our little group a little bit later. She also gave me something called like a podium, which apparently mm. is to do with snake venom. And she said, uh, and I was already fine by then, so I was, I was a bit reluctant to take it. She said, no, do take it, she said, because if there is any lingering poison, this will once and for all put it to bed. So mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you, it's 
nothing short of miraculous, the relief from the kind of pain uh, that was. And, um, you, you know, I, I just, it, it's fantastic. And when I asked her where she thought that it was a good idea to, to try and find the, the best uh, homeopathic remedies, she suggested Helios, and Helios is a place in um, Dunbridge Wells. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's coming across back to front there, but uh, anyway, I'll put the links uh, down below at the end. But Helios um, Homeopathy is in uh, Camden Street in Tunbridge Wells, and you can literally uh, ring them up, ask them for a, for a remedy, uh, or ask them for the remedy that you, you think you need. And also, if you have a question, they'll also help you. It's almost like a, a mini reading. Um, and it's um, fantastic and you literally pay for it, you get it the next day and it's really not expensive and that's what she said they are very ethical and they are also not incredibly expensive either so I think it was you know, it's around about 10, 10 pounds or something or maybe less depending on the type of little tablet or pill or ampule that you choose to have um, anyway so so I just wanted to share that because um, I, I think that the Mer I do have a bit of mercury as pens has uh, found that I've got a little bit. I have had some of my fillings removed uh, and changed out for the white ones, but I'd forgotten I had got, I think, one or maybe two now still left. And now and again, of course, they do kind of link in or leak in. But I thought it would be really interesting if Pat perhaps could tell us a little bit about what happened to her because Penny's got a fantastic mm. overview and, a, and uh, some even more interesting than my story, interesting things to share with us. But Pat, you, you were being treated, if I understand correctly, for um, the menopause and you were having a bit of a rough time and whatever mm. the path was giving you wasn't quite working. And then he thought, oh, there's something else going on here. Yeah, he said effectively, having treated me successfully for other things, because I'd always gone to a homeopath, you know, since I was in my early 20s. Uh, not the same one, but I ended up with this guy who was remarkable, really, and had an interest in, I guess, everything that was slightly weird, you know, as far as the medical profession were concerned. And yes, he'd been treating me for about six months, and I'd recover, and then I'd, I'd dip down even further. So he said, there's something underlying that is pulling you down because I was feeling so bad I felt that I was probably going to get Emmy or um, my symptoms were gradually got worse what I didn't notice to start with although when he asked me it it rang a bell was that I did have a metallic taste in my mouth because obviously the mercury was was leaking that was one of the the early signs and uh, I had very like, um, you know, legs when they're, when your legs, when you can't set restless leg syndrome, but, but really bad. Um, I just I could hardly get to sleep. I couldn't rest my leg. I'd go to bed really tired, but I couldn't, I couldn't relax and I couldn't sleep and, or I would sleep. And the other thing was that as it got worse, I just used to fall asleep anywhere I you know I'd be having a cup of tea and once I was my husband my ex-husband found me in the garden I'd actually fallen asleep on the lawn in the middle of um gardening <laughs> so it was obviously a bit of sun and I relaxed I, I, he, he found me I was absolutely sound asleep but it gradually got worse and then one day when I was with the homeopath he he was looking puzzled and he suddenly said open your mouth <laughs> and he said you've had a lot of fillings. I said, yeah, I've always, you know, I had a, a long history of dental care as a child. Wasn't born with particularly strong teeth. And um, he said it just could be mercury poisoning. And I didn't even know what he was talking about. Mm. And so he sent me off to a, a guy called, it was Jack Levinson, Dr. Levinson or Mr. Levinson, who was a, um, I think he's passed on now, but was a specialist. Um, in this area and he tested me with something that looked like a metrom metronome you know the you know so he put the, a, a sort of needle on or a, a, 
pulse, I would guess it was, on one of my teeth and took the readings of all the teeth that had um, and the, the level of mercury in each tooth, which apparently was off the Richter scale, so no wonder I was feeling ill. Mm. And then, fortunately, he knew of a specialist dentist who I went to to have all the mercury fillings taken out in the correct way because they have to take the ones with the highest um, score, as it were, first. So you could have one out there, one out there, one out there. And that was like four sessions, which um, wasn't terribly pleasant, but this dentist was absolutely amazing. It got me through it. I had to have a rubber dam put in, which I found incredibly challenging. <laughs> so I thought I was choking. And it took me about two or three years to recover. And in those days, um, there was only things like charcoal. I mean, I'm talking 30, 25 years ago. And there wasn't a lot apart from homeopathic support and charcoal. And it was about five or six years ago, a friend picked up a pamphlet um, in a food, one of these big food and health conferences up in London for a product called Sea Greens. And to my amazement, when I looked at the background of sea greens it was approved by mr levinson who said something to the equivalent of if only we'd had this product years ago we would have been able to remove the mercury out of the cells so much quicker than we can than we could do so my risk my recovery was long and slow and very up here one minute i feel hugely energetic and I dipped down again and it went on like that and, and gradually the peaks got less and less. And but it was you, a long journey. Do you know what it was he actually treated you with? Do you remember um, the actual remedy? Empathically. Hmm. Well, I'm, um, my profile is uh, sepia. Okay. So he no doubt, he no doubt included that. But you know what it is when you're with a homeopath? They go very deeply into every reaction that you have um he sent me off for a mineral test and of course mercury affects uh, zinc most particularly and i think magnesium is the other one i think it's yeah mag magnesium yes it is um so my zinc level was on the floor which didn't help as i was going to the menopause at the same time so it was a bit of a double whammy i can't remember exactly what he um he, he treated me with. I think he was at that point treating me to restore myself rather than actually, I don't think he had anything that was actually going to help remove the mercury or the residual mercury themselves. That was my feeling. It was just a case he was trying to keep my body in as much balance as possible to give it the maximum chance to heal. And did he say... Um that if you hadn't spotted that issue, i.e. it was the mercury poisoning, did he say what, your, what the prognosis might have been for you, health-wise? The state that I was in at that point, which is virtually hardly being able to walk, was he said within probably a year or two years I'd be in a wheelchair. And mm -hmm. I could say, actually, it was probably already affecting my brain in some, but it does affect the brain quite seriously. It's mm -hmm. left, and I think... Some people relate it to Parkinson's or the onset of Parkinson's. I don't know. There seems to be a bit of a correlation there. Mm. Um, but I felt completely, I mean, I couldn't make a decision to save your life. Mm. I mean, I was just walking around the fog and exhaustion. So it was, um, yeah, it was a long slog, but worth it. I mean, worth it because I wouldn't be here. Yeah, how fantastic. And, and so whatever he treated you with, how, whatever that, you know, the sepia base perhaps um, um, orientation of, of support was was at least something that got you out, as well as the dental work, something that got yeah. you never to experience yeah. a wheelchair. Thank goodness for that, you know, mm -hmm. term because <clears throat> the quality of life you would have had mm -hmm. in a very short space of time would have been, would have been horrendous. And um, mm -hmm. you know, let alone the mental distress, but the physical uh, issues as well. And, you know, maybe that's a good time to come in with you, Penny, and... Uh, mm -hmm. I know you've got a huge lot to say about all of this, which is absolutely fascinating. And I think people should know more about this. And I don't know where you 
would like to start uh, by way of introduction to um, just a little introduction. Okay, Mum, is that okay? Yeah. Yes, please. Um, I was born 12, 12, 1944, left hander, B negative blood group, 13th astrological sign, and third generation Mercury toxic from my grandmother on the maternal line, which is um, really is the main conductor of Mercury, which you know is neurotoxic down. Yeah the line, down the family line, right? Men contribute a little because mercury gathers around the prostate gland, hence the big contributory factor to prostate cancer, never acknowledged by the allopathic medics, they're not taught. So, so I, I was born, um, yeah, started to grow up very unhappy, very, uh, didn't think I belonged to this world, well I know I don't, but anyway, that's another story. Um, and. Um, eczema, asthma, allergies, depression, plotting to take my own life, age about 11 or 12, and then experiencing all loads of my relations on my mother's side dying of cancer and suicide. Now this is big because since 1819, humans have been um, poisoned deliberately by mercury in dentistry and there's no doubt about it i've done research coming out my ears i've got books here that you just want to, i mean I, I can i can show just a few of them if you like well we can also put them in, in a link below penny as well we've got too many <laughs> well one or two <laughs> the thing is what i did um how did i learn gosh this is the thing i've come to know that we choose from a soul level our parents and then our children choose us obviously and so it goes on for reasons to bring up our consciousness yeah and mercury has been designed deliberately to dumb us down because it it harms the pituitary gland which is your master gland your hormone gland yeah. i had uh, hormone problems before and after the menopause as well Pat. And what was I given blooming tablets and stuff? No way. Could I cope with those? Um, and it's the pituitary gland that is, is so damaged by mercury and also your vagus nerve. Now, the vagal system has been deliberately taken out of consciousness. Of ordinary, you won't read about it in the papers. You won't. In fact, a friend of mine who did quite a high level of um, biology or whatever it was, I'd never heard the vagal system. And the vagus nerve is the biggest, most important cranial nerve coming out the back of the skull. And it controls everything that your conscious mind doesn't. Yeah. And it's affected. Well, that's including your breathing, your heart, your digestion, everything, your emotions and, <laughs> and heavy metal, not just mercury, but aluminium. How interesting from the yeah. chemtrails. <laughs> I tend to gesticulate a bit. I used to be teach art and it'd be comprehensive please do you be you I, I look at the big picture and join the dots <laughs> but i try and look at the glass half full yeah. always half full because it's only through going through these can i be a bit use a bit of french through the shite into the light <laughs> yeah. some of us no restrictions on, on the latte lounge side <laughs> we have to go through these things in order to learn and the biggest learning is the most difficult times we go through. And any attacks on our health, which has been done absolutely deliberately, because yeah. why? We are the most powerful beings on this planet. Because the energy is from the heart. And that is the five to eight love frequency that connects in with the earth. Earth is an anagram of heart. Yeah. And no, we've never been taught. We've never been, you know, and I think of all the times I was school teaching, 27 years art, and I did a load of outdoor ed, because I was, I'm built to move around. I love, you know, being outdoors. Nature to me is the only real world. And then I don't like predation because honestly, John, you know, I'm not on this planet, am I? <laughs> Anything killing each other in nature? No, I don't want to see it. <laughs> um, so go back to the Mercury anyway. Um, yeah, I've moved up here into the late South Lakes, um, which is Grange of the Sands. We're on a ley line, a salt line and a spring line. It's a very powerful area. I met some incredible people and the, my husband who was so deceased now because he was finished off at Furnace General, never going to hospital girls ever because you might not come up. 
<laughs> Sometimes it's good, yeah, it's a big shot window, we know. The allopathic medical industry of sickness, created by the Rockefellers, is at the same time suppressing natural medicines. We come in with homeopathy, yeah. which works, my gosh, does it work? Oh, it's amazing. It's designed to make big pharma very rich, dumb down, distract, deliberately harm, depopulate by design. You've got five Ds there. Yeah. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, and two, two more. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I went to with my husband who was very ill because he believed in his doctor he'd also been terribly abused sexually abused when he was younger and when we have low self-esteem low self-love then our mind and I'm talking the heart mind here not just the head computer mind heart mind your gut brain you all work together creates <laughs> it attracts things into your life that confirm what you think about yourself this is exactly true yeah. which is why we've always been dumbed down. You're a miserable sinner, not worthy to gather up the crumbs under thy table, only God out. Do you see what I'm getting to? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Project. We know that. And I don't, I'm not judging, I'm not criticizing, I'm only, you know, sending it up really, because if we don't laugh, oh, laughter helps revitalize the vagus nerve. It really, and gargling and singing, because the nerve goes right at the back of your, uh, esophagus you know the back of the throat yeah. and then it wanders it goes everywhere in the body and gargling singing which I've always I've got songs in my head I can't get them rid of <laughs> and just you know love music I love the you know everything to do with music it's just yeah. my family in a way because my uh, mother's brother was Sir Malcolm Arnold the composer which I who I feel had a savant genius released by the mercury poisoning from his mother, my grandmother, which released a slight autism with yeah. savant genius. We must have a genius locked up in all of us, but I'm, I haven't found mine yet. I've been looking for it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, um, what happened? Let's go back because I've got so many things that's coming in. Um, when my husband was very ill because he trusted his doctor and he had operations going wrong, he had misdiagnosis, overdrugging, uninformed consent, you name it, and he attracted it. But I was the observer, I learned. And when he went to a kinesiologist, to, who was also a physiotherapist locally, and um, she said, um, Terry, you've got mercury in your body because of the muscle testing of the oh, arm, yes. which is like body dousing, which yes. is something that's great. I do. Dousing with a pendulum, because you've seen me, haven't you? Yes, you're brilliant. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, yeah. um, she said about the mercury in, in Terry, which she had mercury fillings. He also had a gold crown and a root filled tooth. We'll come back to that later if there's time. Now tell me, because I can ramble on for England, you know that, yeah. don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so he had, um, yeah, they said he needs to get the mercury fillings out. So this friend of ours who was a kinesiologist said to me, Penny, do you want to have a little go? I thought, oh, yeah, body dousing. I'm, you know, I've been dousing the pendulum for a little while. And she said, it's the same you've got. And I've got masses of fillings. I had, and I'd inherited mercury before I was born. This is child abuse. Yeah. It's stopped in 2018 in the UK after the EU in 2006 recommended it wasn't put into children's teeth or women of childbearing age because it passes the placental and blood brain barrier, harms the developing brain. I'm quoting now from the EU report. I had to give my MP Tim Farron a few months ago. He'd never seen it, hmm. but we strongly recommend. Which countries banned it straight away? Just about Czech Republic, Netherlands, you know, Sweden, followed by um, Germany and so on. Not the UK. But I know why this is. Why we are being dumbed down even more. So anyway, um, I um, decided that I would we we would get the mercury fillings replaced safely. And a kinesiologist said have a proper mercury test at Biolab in London. And then I'm going back to 2002, 2003. It cost 60 pounds then. Not, I didn't know that I could do it by dousing. I right. can check mercury poisoning and the level and so on with, with the pendulum because the pulses in my fingers move the pendulum over the chart. Yeah. Where do pulses come from? The heart. It knows everything. <laughs> and yeah, I did do that and I was through the roof and she recommended the kinesiologist to go to Dr. John Roberts, who practices in Huddersfield. He was in Oldham then, near, near um, Manchester, suburb of Manchester. 
And I remember going along and having a consultation, which I was just so lucky I had the money because re I'd retired from teaching then. I had to because Terry, my husband, was so ill. I took early retirement and I had my superannuation paid in my... I just feel sorry for all those poor folk stuck in a toxic cage because they can't afford mm. to get rid of the poison. It's yeah. shocking. Sweden, they, they help pay for mercury to be replaced. Oh, right. Terry. Didn't know that. Yeah. I may be out of date a bit because I'm going back. So I've done a lot of research, you know, as soon as I had mine. Yes. Anyway, I know. Consultation. Yeah. Uh, he did have a little machine, but different to you, the one that you, your mm. dentist used. But it was one that measured the um, level of amalgam vapor that comes out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it was removed in one quadrant and then another, then four different appointments I had to go. And yeah. he is actually on um it was on youtube but it's been taken off now 2009 a film on tonight uh channel was it itv itv tonight and it's called what's in the mouth i've got a dvd of it and i copy it lots of times and Brilliant. take it out conferences and send it to people and it's called and it, it it's about mercury in, in tea. Yeah. This is too far. That's the last time there was a program on telly about mercury poisoning. And oh, right. Roberts was filmed and everybody had the cameraman had to put on these full filter masks like World War Three, you know? <laughs> And uh, it was a lovely interview with him. Then they interviewed the CEO of the British Dental Association. What a joke. You've got to watch it. I can. I yeah, can I, will, I will. I haven't seen it. I, I'll send you a DVD. You can't watch it online now. But I've got DVDs and I copy and copy. I've got a standard yeah, copy. <laughs> yeah, and then um, uh, the, uh, the CEO of the dental, <laughs> they asked him, do you agree that mercury leaks out of dental amalgam? Well, no, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, it talks a load of rubbish. Then the interviewer goes on and on and on and questioning. And the chap said, you didn't tell me you were going to ask me questions like this. He said, yes, I did. And, so, and then he goes, la, 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 la. Honestly, really? he goes, oh, my God. Yes. And they leave it in. <laughs> they leave it in and go back to start the interview again. Would you agree? <laughs> Stuttering a little, little bit. You know, it's an absolute cracker. I've got <laughs> so many films about. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I had to, and then I had to detox for six months. Now, John Roberts used um, Dr. Dietrich Klinghart. Can't pronounce it very well because it's he's German but lives in the States. Brilliant dentist, and his protocol was cilantro and Chlorella. One was homeopathic, one was herbal. I oh. can't remember which one. Um, after six months detox, I still had mercury in my body, but I went to um, Elverston Natural Health Centre. They had a quantum energy scan, QXC1, and oh, also yes. Spina. That, that mm. machine I was trying to uh, remember yes. the name of, and now you've just, yeah. It, tell me, sorry to interrupt, Penny, is that, no, the, no, one, you is that the one where you, can, you sort of get plugged into or they put electrodes and it can scan your whole body and yeah. then it can also rebalance it. Yeah, all the chakras oh. work remotely, Joan. Oh, it you work really? remotely. Yeah, really? so you don't have to be there and it can actually pick up on your something just oh, once wow. the name. Yeah. It's great, isn't it? Oh, great. And the Roy Watkins of Obviston Natural Health Centre trained uh, one of his um, um, like students, really, who... Um, and she, she's homeopath as well. Now her name is, oh gosh, I don't know if people know I'll think of it later on. <laughs> if she watches this, she'll be really cross because she that was a nice lady. I'll take her <laughs> Caroline Sim, got it. Okay. And she works from home and she's got the equipment to make the homeopathic remedies. So she can work, work remotely. I've got a phone number, everything. She's been very busy since all this pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Wait, where's she based? Is she's in the UK. She's in Ulverston, which is oh, up near late. Um, about 12, 10, 12 miles from Grange River Sands, in between Barrow, in Furness, and yes. Grange. So yeah, in uh, up in the lakes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, and okay. and you mentioned great that. homeopath. Mm. Yeah, anyway, so all my symptoms after six months detox suddenly disappeared because I was allergic. I had shocking allergies. You know, house dust, good excuse for not doing the housework. <laughs> Just in wool jumper, and I used to love knitting, and I can't wear any, I've just not got used to wearing wool jumpers again since then. Um, I couldn't cope with, you know, I just used to, my sister, hay fever, shocking, 
Well, before she never did anything about her teeth, though, nothing I could do to help her. And she died an alcoholic, 2016, and she was my age. What a shame, eh? Yeah. But, you know, and all the allergies, there's no such thing as an allergen. Did you know that? Yeah. We're he not here to be allergic to anything on this planet. It's our immune systems being repressed by continual coping with toxins. Yeah. Not necessarily mercury, there could be other metals, it could be just chemicals, harmful chemicals. Yeah you know, that the body doesn't get rid of easily. One and, of the um, things that I was taking as well, Penny, I don't know if you've heard of it, is, uh, which is cheap as chips as well, uh, that um, often people associate with gardening, but it's the food grade version of diatomaceous earth, which is just like, chalk, earth, yeah. Yeah, just like a chalk powder, but food grade folks, if ever I say I'm taking anything, it's always food grade. I'm not, you know, taking it out the dirt though, you know, who knows? That might not be so bad. But uh, so every now and again, I'll, I'll just have a teaspoon of that. And it doesn't taste horrible. It's just a chalky flavor. And I, I don't really mind that. But every now and again. And then there was something called leolite, which was a tincture. Zeolite. Zeolite clay. Yep. It's all zeolite. from the earth, zeolite. isn't it? Sorry, zeolite. Yes. And, uh, and that was great. Uh, and, and really, that was a maintenance. It wasn't that I felt that I had um, anything. But well, I know, you know, I've got a mercury filling or two and you've picked up that so it's just really keeping yeah, myself yeah. well you know preempting anything as well being proactive in my own well well-being like you have and, and certainly know you know i know pat has as well um being forced into it but it was it so did um just going back to you to you so did you recover do you think completely from that uh, mercury uh no it's still taking time but the main thing i i noticed straight away was the allergy disappeared wow right, great fantastic freedom. i had a pain in my neck that had gone i had thinning hair oh, that right, yeah. sort of was a lot better as a time went on but as i go through the years it's only perhaps in the last 18 months that I even knew that mercury damaged the pituitary gland. I didn't know. I picked up this fantastic book by Hal Huggins, Dr. Hal Huggins, okay. Uninformed Consent, The Hidden Dangers in Dental Care. Yeah, and, I, and I, I didn't know that it damaged the pituitary gland. I hadn't got a, now, even though you get rid of them, now this is dousing, pick this up, even though you get rid of your mercury, the gland is still down in its house it does not it's pick it. unless you oh, really? make a conscious effort one put your mind on it cure is in the mind and that helps and yeah. then you actually what i learned from the four books that came into my consciousness within a very short time one of them was this the other was honey as medicine by a lady called ruth tan and she's written one for children and she doesn't sell honey everybody thinks she sells. she doesn't she cured herself of a long long standard problem a bit like ma something it could be yeah with raw honey and she had tablespoons of it well i, I tell and you since you mentioned it to me i've started only having raw honey um and sometimes if i can't find the raw i'll just make sure it's an organic good one so i'm not i'm not buying the cheap honey anymore no, it's heated up and all the ends it's the enzymes in the honey yeah. and it, i have now what i took was about six yeah two nice dessert spoons full in the morning and two in the evening and you know i notice a difference um a dousing as well what's pituitary on my chart it goes up to naught to 100 on one side yin and the other side yang and i take that as a percentage so this this is your dowsing you have a chart that you douse over with that mm. that number and you use it then as a degree uh, yeah but i see with a damaged pituitary gland damaged spleen Oh, right. Most of us are walking around with damaged spleens because we haven't been bonded with the birth, our birth mother, me, probably born 1944, out I came, upside down, belted to make you cry, or straight away to the bath. You see, there's no bonding, and that is so important. Damaged uh, pituitary gland, um, vagus nerve, but luckily pineal was fine because I had not had fluoridated anything. Yeah. Because sodium fluoride has been put into our um, some drinking water, plus medicines, foods on purpose because it calcifies the pineal gland. Yeah. But when I started with the honey, gradually I could see it getting better and better. And now... Well, I, I have to say that you have the most incredible energy level of anybody I've just ever met. And I wanted to ask Pat about this actually because Pat has been taking sea greens 
um, yeah. which is uh, which is made by an English company, and it is also um, pure organic and uh, in the UK, and it is fant a seaweed essentially. If I didn't say that, and it is Pat absolutely has um, you know found it a lifesaver. So Pat, do you want to just quickly say? Uh, you know, your, yeah. what, what reaction you've had to, say, taking sea greens because your system is really sensitive, maybe like Penny's as well. I'm a bit yeah. more of a robust girl, I think. <laughs> yeah, it, interestingly, <laughs> Penny, um, the... it was, we, you talk about allergies. I, I had a lot of allergies when I was a child. Ah, right. And yeah. only when I was talking to my homeopath that he said, um, do you ever get a, a a dark ring under the metal of a of a ring? Say, do you ever get a mark on your skin? And I did. Yeah. And I also, when I was a child, my father used to when I had a watch, and you know it's got the metal back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always had a rash under that. Mm -hmm. So the more I told this to my homeopath, the more he knew he was on the right track. But yeah. I didn't like the allergies because I had extreme hay fever in my teens I mean it's continuous mm. I was allergic to house dust perfume yeah. fir trees cigarette smoke oh, God. anything I mean you know I was just oh, that seemed to go as I got older fortunately but I've still got a tendency towards it so I, I didn't know that link so that's interesting mm. And, uh, mm. I didn't. Um, I didn't until you told me. Understand the, um, you know, the ancestral link either. So mm. uh, oh, it just made me wonder whether my mother had that because she had similar uh, mm. problems with her teeth as well. So that's an interesting. So mm. yes, when I got onto sea greens, um, I did it mainly because um, of the recommendation by Mr. Levinson about the detoxing elements of sea greens mm. the, which is basically a, an organic seaweed i mean if you if you go on to um the main suppliers of sea greens the actual company is called sea greens and you can look that up online but uh where i get my supply is a company called oceans of goodness mm. uk and they have a lot of they also have pet granules and all sorts of other things and salt baths, I think. So they've got quite a nice little range, but it is primarily all mostly sea greens and they do a sea greens with iodine supplement as well. So um, having taken it, I realized that um, I felt it was a, a good antioxidant for me. I felt a lot brighter, a lot clearer mentally and um, my gut was better. I've got to, you know, the, the, the gut is affected um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think even as a child, I would say my gut was affected in some way, but it became worse with the mercury, and it's just mm -hmm. a, it's a hereditary thing that I've got. So I wanted something that was going to to help the the gut stabilise. Um, also, things like you know, I noticed um, I've just currently run out actually and put a reorder in, but I noticed after about three days of not taking it, I can feel my energy levels dropping and my hair's not quite as springy or, you know, all those signs of additional health benefits. Mm. So I would highly recommend it as a, just a very good general supplement as well, because it's very, it's a very powerful one. And, you know, if you've got a healthy gut, you've got a, a long way to having a reasonably healthy body. Mm. So yes. for, for me, that's quite important. Yeah, and I'll just say Pat uh, just wrote a few notes here, and I'm just, I'll just quickly say that uh, about uh, Dr. Levinson or Jack Levinson that he wrote um, on about mercury uh, poisoning. He wrote the menace in the mouth: a study of the effects of mercury poisoning. And uh, I don't know whether the menace in the mouth in the mouth is also a website, but uh, I'll see if I can find the details. Yeah, the available medicine in the mouth all the stuff that he wrote is actually yes. available on on the ocean of goodness site oh is it ocean of goodness mm. okay dot co dot uk so yeah you can download that on oh the, okay i didn't realize it was on that way okay you go down the menu it just says dot, uh, jack levinson menace in the mouth and it's got mm. the whole documented um trials that they did this, is, this is so so important for people to be aware of because 
um, I, you know, we just need remedies for our, our you know, taking, taking responsibility for ourselves because it's clear that um, not, it's not all uh, malice of, of forethought, some it is, but some it isn't, some it's just pure ignorance. And, and practitioners of allopathic medicines do not have the knowledge. And us researchers, especially Penny and, and you, Pat, you've done a lot of research because of your health needs. Um, uh, you, you know, it's, uh, that's why we're more of an expert than they are in some ways. And so, uh, you know, I, I would definitely take my own counsel first. Uh, and probably those around me who have had a lot of experience with their health and uh, remedies. Uh, and it's really important that people become aware because mm. mercury poisoning, I think you would say, Penny, you know, mm. with your husband, uh, mm. I mean, he had a horrible time. And I think also, mm. was yeah. it the same for your daughter? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and in a way, what happened to my daughter Hazel was one of the reasons I'm up here and know what I'm, I'm what I know, and also doing what I'm doing with this, you know, working in the other dimensions and helping with what I call these heart blasts, which <laughs> amazing. Yeah, she um, it was my best friend, and um, um, gosh, fourth fourth generation mercury toxic allergies to the one two things that she loved cats and horses um she trained to be a physio at guy's hospital and had a lots of friends masses you know wonderful fiance they were engaged to be married she got her own cottage in the country the horse had just been sold a cat and she puts a plastic bag over her head and she's gone she's only in the next dimension she's very happy where she is but that was the big wake-up call because you're never the same again and the one thing that, uh, you know, again, adding to the suicides in the family, my cousin, age 40, my children found her, my uncle, my aunt, type, uh, piped the exhaust in the car. And this was all on that my grandmother's line of descent. My uncle Malcolm Arnold attempted suicide and drank a lot. You see, alcohol comes in as well because people are so unhappy because the neurotoxic poison dumbs down the whole of your... Um, not just your head brain, but your heart brain. Luckily, I didn't have a gut problem, but my husband did, because yeah. again, he got five jawbone infections oh. that were never picked up because of toxic dentistry 20 odd years ago. And one of them, can you read that? Yeah, Root canal cover up. Cover up. Yeah. George Meinig. Meinig. This is one of the best books, I recommend it. I had to get it from uh, America. It's from the Western Price. Um, oh, yeah. Have, oh, and the, you know, I mean, you have four um, wisdom teeth extractions under a guy's, when he lived in London, guy's hospital students overseen by a dentist, but they weren't taught to take the periodontal ligament out, which holds the tooth in place to the bone. Now, unless that's scraped out, it gets infected. And a lot of NHS dentists now don't do it because I know a friend of mine, Yvonne Stuart Taylor, who a good friend of mine lives in Windermere, um, she went to a dentist. I went with her because she didn't drive and she'd had a neurological problem. So I went with her about 18 months ago now. And she had an extraction. And I said to Yvonne, make sure the dentist takes out this ligament, periodontal ligament, because they don't. And that's what happened to my husband, Terry. He had infections that were treated by antibiotics anti means against biotic is life against life when honey is the natural probiotic but of course they won't because big pharma wants to make a lot of money and the infection went into his jawbone now the only scanner it's called a cavitat scanner in the country was be owned by the bedford dentist called munro hall doctors graham and lillian munro hall they've sold the business on now it's still being worked as a holistic um wonderful um dentist practiced in Bedford and I used to live in Northampton I was born and bred in Northampton which is the next county so I was able to go down with Terry my husband and stay with friends and travel I saw the operation to clean out these holes in his jaw which were infections um, and the biggest one was in the root field tooth it is shocking what they're doing with the root field tooth uh, you know when I think about it um, because 
the other jawbone infections caused awful problems, which was one of the reasons going back in time, he could not cope with prescription drugs. They caused, he suffered from real strong adverse effects because yeah. of the problem. Because every tooth is on an energy meridian in the body. Yeah, absolutely. Every tooth. So if a tooth is pumping out poison and the root canal, it's, it causes focal infections, not just um, you know, near the tooth, but on the meridian. Yeah. In the body systems and also the organs. Yeah. So it can it can be a contributed to cause cancer, arthritis, heart dis heart disease. If it's on the heart meridian, you're in big trouble. And of course that is never taught to the allopathic medics. And they don't and want to know that. I think what a lot of people will not realise, and I, you know, it's, uh, it's good that I'm reminded of it again, that each tooth is on a meridian. I did know yeah. that. And that you know, uh, there was some, there's a, a guy called Joseph, I think it was Corvo, who wrote a book called Zone Therapy. It's a little bit, all he does, if you just imagine the whole body sort of in lines, you know, yeah. throughout the body. And, and of course, what, whatever your meridians are going through, all the different layers and, uh, um, and mm -hmm. pathways through. And so you can travel, you can track. You know what, where the tooth what the tooth is going through and is it going through the heart or is it going through the lung and, yeah. and it, mm. it's very very important information very important you right. have, uh, and some understanding about that it's um gosh and, uh, and the, what he had this was the sort of within one two three four years perhaps appendicitis gallstones um well, I forget, a number of and they were all on the small intestine meridian which was linked to the root canal linked to the root canal you know and when i think of the operations going wrong misdiagnosis mistreatment and uh, you know and you sort of think god what a way to learn and um and he's happy now i told the nhs meeting after he passed away because of over drugging in well you know not go on too much about it because that's not what i'm here for but i, I learned so much and all i want to do is um get a big magic wand and wave it and make everybody well but <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I haven't found the magic wand yet if you find it let me know where it is because this is what's happening our immune systems most people's immune systems are really repressed yeah and that's not just because of toxins in the body well it is it's all linked literally to toxins in the body because we have cellular membranes that can cope with we're our own self-cleansing mechanism within our bodies providing the membranes of the cells working well but what harms them what causes them to shut down is the emf pollution your 3g yeah. 4 5g yeah and that yeah. big thing but we can protect ourselves against this and and it's the unseen energies isn't it you can't see them yeah. feel them yeah and i have a monitor that actually picked up these uh, emfs and turned them to sound and after a while i suddenly thought What's going on? I got used to, I've got a phone, mobile phone mask, not that far from where I live, yeah. but we're protected here. A lot of shrubs, nature will protect us. <laughs> and I was, was used to the sound that the EMFs, 1800 megahertz as it was a while ago, suddenly it had gone up, this, this monitor was screaming. Oh, wow. So the EMF pollution is very, very high. And that's all over the UK now. Yes. It starts start in Jersey, London, and then big cities, and then it's, yeah. it's everywhere. Yeah, I know. Do you, and unless we protect ourselves, the body cannot self-cleanse properly or absorb nutrients or communicate. Well, well, do you think that some things like uh, organite uh, are uh, it, help in that regard? It did, it did. But what I found out with Adelson, we've been going through stages. And to start with organite, fantastic. Yeah, I've got some around my allotment. You know. mm -hmm. um, then it went to the Princess Diana pendant which was a double spiral the bifilla double spiral the princess diana channeled through um um and stewart i think her name was and stewart uh then it went to shungite oh yeah which is a yeah. russian um volcanic mineral yeah. yeah a little piece of shungite which i've got in my water but big bottles of um yeah. spring water i have the demijohns and the shungite but what I'm finding now, it doesn't cope with this 5G, this high, because it's a totally different frequency. It not only knocks the heart chakra down, but also DNA strands. Mm -hmm. And it really is really damaging to the body. And that is, and I've got one on now, clear quartz crystals. 
Oh, right. Pro yeah. Pro you programmed them. I didn't even know about this till last oh, November. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's fascinating. My house is full of crystals, I must say. But um, no, and clear quartz, clear yeah, quartz crystal clear. resonates with your soul star chakra, which is the one above the crown. Only clear quartz. The other quartz crystals are great. You can have the pink, you know, but yeah. it's clear quartz you can program. Cleanse them, program them with your mind. You hold them in your left hand. Yeah. You put sound and then salt water, salt, sea salt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, are you worth, are we worth our salt? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then you can hold your left hand, hold the crystal to your heart and just say in your mind or out loud what you want it to do. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. You can send healing to somebody. You can protect somebody else or yourself or your property, yeah. your animals, whatever. Yeah. And then yeah. place it or you wear it or you can put one in a little metal, you know, yeah. a little crystal. And the psychic tree at the moment because our um, rock shop near Ambleside that sold masses has been shut down, of course. We can't do anything that's helpful to health, but you're okay with the booze things and the um, uh, drugs, <laughs> I mean, you know, pharmaceutical <laughs> drugs, that's all right. <laughs> and the psychic tree will send very, very quickly packets of clear quartz crystals that are 89 pH, oh, polished. Okay. That's all 89 pH. Yeah. I've just had 40 delivered, which I'll give away. <laughs> Yeah, oh, no, it's lovely. The other thing that works, Julie, is high unconditional self love out yeah. of this dimension. Yeah. Right? So we, we ex embrace ourselves, yeah, the big hug, <laughs> as multi dimensional beings. Yeah. Extremely powerful. Now, when we do that, the pituitary and pineal gland secretions. Sent, tend to, and I've only found this out in the last perhaps year, send out a force field of protective energy, like a bubble. Yeah. You can't be touched. I found out through dowsing, if uh, Princess Diana, Jill Dando, Robin Cook, David Kelly, um, you know, you go on, it's so many of these poor, for, and the naturopathic doctors up in Florida that have been taken out, deep state assassination. Had this people still around them, mm. they'd still be here. Yeah, yeah. There's a likelihood they'd still be here because not even can you be seen by these dark beings, the other dimensional entities. Yeah, yeah? yeah no, absolutely. I can't, see, I can't see you. I mean, it's fascinating. So that is how powerful we are. And it I've is I've one. Got, um, I've got crystals all around me, but big, big crystals, and I sometimes use them. Um, it's called the Atlantean um, configuration. There's oh, a guy that's... called Dr. Frank Alper. So many, many donkeys years ago, I went to one of his classes. He was visiting the UK and he, he wrote a couple of three books on Atlantean healing really? and this configuration of crystals. You have wow. 12 or 13 and I've, you have them going at the chakra points down the, down. So you, I'm lying on the floor and you have them at the shoulder, the elbow, the hip, the, what I don't have it at the wrist, I hold one, and then at the hip, uh, the knee, the ankle, and then you have one at the foot and one at the head, and that. So on the left side, it's going, the points are pointing downward, and on the right side, they're pointing upward, and mm. it, it's amazing. It has a wonderful kind of rejuvenation effect as mm -hmm. well. Oh, I could do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and sometimes you can really feel the energy shifting. It's really mm. when you're linking in with them. Um, and I always remember the first time I saw it, him demonstrating this uh, to an American with an American friend. She had some beads on. I forget what they were, but because of her her um, need to rebalance, it kind of shot the beads off her. It broke them. They just uh, <laughs> the power. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, because uh, yeah, the energy was so intense. It kind of. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, where did you learn about that, Drew? It was a workshop. I, I was a crystal oh, right. therapist kind of person donkeys years ago, and I was just exploring with like um, Harry Oldfield, the electro crystal therapist. Harry Oldfield, yes, I've seen him. I've got yeah. two DVDs of his. I, I've got the old unit. I don't. I haven't used it for ages, but I've got the old electro crystal therapy unit. And then I was working really? with crystals. And you know, one time I always remember one crystal workshop that I gave, and uh, this guy was dragged along by his boy by a by um his girlfriend sorry not boyfriend and uh, he, didn't, he really didn't want, <laughs> he really didn't want to be there but it's an interesting story because i was uh i got everybody to close their eyes and i passed around different crystals 
clear quartz, uh, smoky, smoky ones, and then uh, smoky, uh, like the snow quartz, and then crystal uh, rose quartz. And mm -hmm. um, anyway, so when it came to feedback time, because everybody had quite an experience with them, and this guy was in a state of shock. And I went, go on then, to do tell, this is somebody, you know, kicking and screaming there. And he said, well, he said, I could smell roses with the rose quartz. I went, oh, wow, how lovely is that? I said, I, I don't have that. I didn't at all, and nobody else did. He said, yeah, but what you don't know is that I had an accident. I came off a horse, and I broke my nose, and I've never been able to smell anything since. Oh, wow. So, it's it's changed your life forever. Yeah. So he was a convert to this other dimensional energy, whether it's, you know, we threw crystals as the pathway or something else. Uh, so that was gorgeous. So yeah, the Dr. Frank Alpha, that's a long time ago. But yeah, so I use those because I, I was bequeathed some, uh, quite a, a lot of crystals uh, a long time ago. And so I, I use them, but I've got just tons of small ones around as well. So the, the whole place kind of reverberates with crystals. Wow. <laughs> But can I just go back to your to Hazel? If you just oh, yeah, my daughter. Mm -hmm. I I just yes, I just wondered, was there a trigger or was she just beginning? Yeah, there was a trigger. Yeah, yeah. No, she she coped as I did, and girls, women are strong, aren't we? And some sort of had more um, probably reacted against this triple vaccination. Looking back. Um, because obviously I always say to people, do you think mercury would be put in vaccinations for children? Do you think they'd do that? Yes, the merosol, without any regard of what toxins are already in the body. This is what is yeah. very yeah. topical at the moment with this yes. pandemic thing and <clears throat> Bill Gates and I won't talk about him. <laughs> Don't <Yeah>. swear. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, and when I saw her medical records in 2008, I went down to Northamptonshire and I... I had to sign a disclaimer saying, I thought she'd been given an antidepressant. And I know because this is what happened when Terry had a break, my first husband had a breakdown, mental breakdown in 1998, after, you know, the loss of Hazel, also had trouble at work. He's got all this past stuff that had gone on when he was a child that I didn't know anything about. Oh, yeah, sexual abuse. And I doused and the um, teacher that abused him with all these, it was got a, a demonic entity possession soul goes out do you see yeah this has happened a lot um um anyway i went to see a medical records and you know going back to the antidepressants very often the adverse effects are uh, feature the most shocking conditions that the depressant is trying to help yes and this is yeah you know, anyway you know about that and i thought and i'm just i need to find out i need some closure here because i've got here a file that i've created here it is for her. This is my research file for Hazel. There it is. Oh, yes. Lovely. Lovely looking young lady. Yeah, and so much in here that I gathered. Oh, look. Experts are still clueless. The effects yeah. of that. Or even heart failure linked with status and poison. This is in the Daily Mail. Yeah. This is children being poisoned with chemicals so they'd even got it in the mainstream and it goes on and on shane glaxo reveals truth on suicide drugs and you know um, lynn mctaggart a lot of what dots don't tell you it's yeah. all in your head from yeah. the book i photocopied by hal huggins again a link between dental mountain and but it what i found out was that she hadn't been given an antidepressant but she was given and I don't have a problem with this. She was engaged. She was 29 years old. Saturn return, isn't it? 29. Oh, um, yes. An oral contraceptive. We thought the world of her fiancé. He was the nicest guy. Naturopath, homeopath, and okay. osteopath. All three, yeah. Oh, In fact, we were going to form a little business all together. I was going to pack up teaching and be physio helper. And Terry, my husband, was going to be receptionist. Yeah. And it was, it was all set. And... Um, I thought, okay, Femulin, don't know much about that. I'll have a look. It's a low progesterone. It's taken off the market now. I'll check that. And I looked down the side effect, the side effects. And when I saw depression, I thought, you're joking. Depression? Then I looked even further and it contained a chemical called etinodial diacetate. I remember it well. 
which is in the same, so it's the same chemical that's in some acne medications that doctors prescribe for acne. Really? And that's youngsters very often topping so, themselves with suicide. So I, again, look at the big picture, join the dots. And um, I'm, I remember contacting my um, MEP. Um, the, the, do you know when I talked to my MEP at that time, uh, I can't remember his name, I, and I told him, because I happened to see him out at a, some event or other, and um, he just put his tongue all around his teeth. Well, I've got dental amalgam, I'm all right. And I thought, does that tell you a lot, eh? Hey? <laughs> yeah. You've done the thing. But I, I remember a, a friend of mine, um, in fact, he, he's a, also a musician and kind of concert pianist, uh, and, and he would now and again take uh, antidepressants and then one time, I mean, not a lot, but, you know, from time to time, if you just needed a bit of a, a help support. And then he began to feel suicidal and something just yeah. made him look at the insert and see what, what the side effects were. And guess what? One of the, I, I couldn't tell you what the medication was, but it was for, for, specifically for depression. And one of the side effects was suicidal tendencies. Yeah, you absolutely. can't make it up. You um, now, this is what up. medical profession is all about. You know, I shocking. mean, the... shocking. <laughs> I mean, they once they realize that, you know, they they stop taking those, they have at least that that ability to do that. Yeah. But you know, it, it is awful. So, do you think with Hazel that, um, that, that was, was a, the, the, that was the trigger? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the trigger. And mm. gosh, although well, she chose me, Mercury fillings and all, you know, from the soul level. So, yes. I feel as we incarnate in our groups and our ancestral lines that yeah. it was really to help me wake up and then do as much as I have done to help you know myself obviously first and then others yeah because I've been conferences since from 2004 and it was 9-11 yeah. that started waking me up a lot to what was going on and it drew us all together the 9-11 yeah. group so I met Ian Crane on yeah. one of his and then the AV conferences I've all been to since AV2 where I saw Oh, and also Glastonbury Symposium, where I saw, um, um, what's the name of the pip camera guy that you were talking about that does the crystal? Oh, uh, Harry, Harry Oldfield. I, saw him, I was there when he gave his presentation. Oh, I've got a DVD of it. Yeah, and I've, I've met so many people. Uh, um, Len Horowitz, Dr. Len Horowitz, yes, all sorts. Great. And a lovely homeopath. Now, write this name down. It's called Trevor Gunn, G U W -M, M. Trevor Gunn. Ever gone? I've got his DVD. He gave a fantastic presentation at one of the AV, AV3 perhaps, or AV2, I can't remember, AV3. Huh? And it was about vaccination, but it was looking at the history. And he was a very well qualified homeopath, a young guy, Trevor Gunn. And what he looked at and presented was the very well done, lovely man, was the two French scientists. One we've heard of, Louis Pasteur, who yeah. was followed. You are not very, you know, you're humans. You, you, it's the germ theory. You're going to get all these germs. You've got to, or Antoine Béchamp, a French scientist at the same time. He was a doctor. Yeah, Antoine Béchamp, who was saying, you've got an amazing immune system, providing you, you know, you follow, all, tick, the, tick the boxes and whatnot. Yeah. And you, you can't cope with as against Pasteur was not a doctor, the germ theory, but who, what, who did they follow to make a lot of money for Big Pharma? Mm. Pasteur, you know, so this lovely, it's probably online actually, Trevor was Gunn. The, was the other guy, the um, uh, uh, French one, was he, am I getting it uh, mixed up with someone who found that there was a memory in water and then Therefore, you know, a Japanese water science, water analyst called Dr. Masaru Emoto. Oh, no, yeah, I know about him. And that comes into homeopathy because obviously water is, uh, you know, it's still there. The memory of this, even though, even yeah. though the homeopathic medicine is diluted, diluted, diluted. So is that yeah. what that French uh, scientist was, was also proving? Uh, or have I got that right? No, no, no. Masaru Emoto was totally in a league of his own. Oh, yes, yeah, no, I know about him. I meant the French one that you meant you mentioned. Antoine oh, Béchamp. Be oh, yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah. I'm not sure if we're still alive. Uh, we're going back quite a few years now, Pasteur. Yeah. I don't no, no, know. No, Béchamp, that one. 
I'd have to have a look online. You probably yeah. everything's online, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, so I have to just check whether he was the one. There was some French guy, and I, you know, do you remember when there was a Channel Four series forever ago called Heretics? And I remember Linus Pauling was on it, and a French guy. And I wonder if it's him. Oh, I wonder who it was. Um, oh, that's Linus Pauling was very good, wasn't he? Yeah, fantastic. I think they had Rupert Sheldrake on. Mm -hmm. a French guy whose uh, name escapes me and um, one or two others but it was heretics because they were not you know towing the party allopathic line and mm -hmm. uh, you know had a horrible time because of it or a very difficult time anyway so uh, that's fascinating. It's, it's much just come in very briefly John while well, it's on my mind because there's a film that's been on general release that's coming on Netflix soon and it's available on DVD and it's a Disney animation now I don't like Disney, because you know he wasn't, <clears throat> you know, he was a bit of a child abuser and there's also nasty subliminals. But the digital animation on Frozen 2 film, oh, right. about the girls, you know, the, the, the sisters, and is amazing because the whole theme that goes through it is water has memory. Oh, right, okay. Honestly, water has memory. And it, <laughs> it's amazing. It starts off with a song that's heard, again, the power of sound and music. Absolutely. By Sisters yeah. and you have to follow it. She finds a tribe that's like locked in this um, um, state because of this war that went on that should never happen. And the actual war was recreated in in the digital in the story in ice in ice that's frozen nice. yeah. yeah, incredible. And then the, the whole thing was in the end healed and the power the the, the original tribe um, had their land back and everything. And it's just, and me, I'm looking for messages in these films because they're yeah. a lot. Yeah. And one, Water Has Memory, the song, the importance of sound in the um, 432528 frequency range, not 440 hertz, which Rockefeller family, you know, um, made the instrumental, uh, Western instrumentalists retune there. So it's a scale of dissonance. And also the power coming back to the indigenous people of the which obviously um, has been tried to, you know, with the um, schools, what do they call residential schools? Yes. We tried to take that out, the Indian out of the, or, or even the Bless them. Yeah, Australian. Absolutely. But yeah. the power will come back, and it is, and it will. And um, um, that's us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, look, this seems to be, I don't want to keep you ladies too long, and I would love to do this again, reconvene, because Penny, you, I know you have got a ton of well, things yeah. to speak about. And I think this is a lovely way to do it, just, you know, not to taxi ourselves too much, but to maybe have three quarters of an hour, an hour. I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure how long this uh, free version of Zoom is lasting. It did say something about 40 minutes, but we seem to be going on a bit longer. That's good. I hope. So well, I'll see, I don't want to lose it also. I don't, that's why I'm <laughs> gonna mm -hmm. wrap it up in the latte lounge, the ETN latte lounge. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think it would be great to, to do this. And, you know, you've got so much to share that um, I was telling Pat as well. Pat's also an animal communicator. Uh, oh, I'm so interested in that. Yeah, mm. and has had some uh, very interesting uh, experiences with that. And that's, uh, but she's also done these fantastic uh, books linking, uh, channeled uh, from St. Francis of Assisi. Pat, you, you know, you can say, more what they are than I can uh, before we uh, leave. Or perhaps you would just like to share that with us, some of the books. Yeah, yeah. Well, the uh, probably the uh, the first one that came through was when I was about uh, fifty, um, which was quite a surprise to me. Um, I'd been doing a yoga class, although I've always had quite a spiritual leaning, you know, right from a child. Um, I suddenly found myself not automatically writing but just hearing sentences and started to write them down and it ended up as a book and uh, that took a year to write and cool. uh, my my life went in i was getting divorced and my life went in another direction so the the book sort of sat there i tried to get it published but it, it, it never took off really but it was just always there and many years passed and i went to um, you know various other businesses ended up doing animal communication Mm. And it was that route through the communication to animals that opened up a channel for other ascended masters like Francis of Assisi, 
Uh, and Jesus and uh, St Paul and people like that to come through mm. and um, it was about three years ago that I woke up one morning and I heard this voice in my head and I, I, I couldn't work out who it was I knew it was somebody new and I said who are you and he said well who do you think and I said well I don't really know and he said well it's God I want to speak to you and he said, the reason that I want to speak to you is because you have done a lot of work where the channeling comes into you, but now we can have a dialogue. It's and that's like the Neil Donald up. Walsh um, series, yeah. or it's what it calls me a mind of anyway. Yeah, it, it is, it is um, a lot of people say that, and it, it is actually, it is that, and it's a partly about my transformation and my journey as well. And... Um, in fact, when I arrived to um, Joanne's house, which was, we all, we laughed and say I was airlifted here because none of it was planned, no. as far as we were concerned anyway. <laughs> I just, uh, through a certain set of circumstances, arrived with my two cats <laughs> on her doorstep. <laughs> a bit of a wait and stray. <laughs> and um, so... <laughs> The, uh, the God Spoke to Me series went through to book two and the end part of it, which I haven't written, the last chapter will be about what's happened since I've been in this this area because that side of communication has uh, developed quite substantially. Mm. So that's been um, quite interesting for me as well as other people. Yeah, and part of just uh, just to find just to finish off here, the other thing that Pat is doing is um, working on the development of uh, which she's already had one, uh, you know, done this uh, like a dry run, I guess, uh, in in Devon um, at a, a location down there, a, a peace centre for veterans, and working with veterans and their animals as well. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. which is which is really beautiful. <clears throat> so. Yeah, perhaps, you know, working in lots of different areas and, and these books seem to be, you know, leading, leading, leading you, don't they? Yeah, yeah, the, the books are definitely leading me down a, a path and I'm just obediently following. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of the books, Pat? Um, the, the, the God Spoke to Me is the only one that's actually published at the moment. That's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. That's um, in Kindle format, and the rest are all in written format, but they haven't been published yet because I'm having to go That's through the production process. Mm. So it has felt like since I've been here and I've had the opportunity to be very quiet and, and concentrate that I've had a lot given to me, and right. now I'm trying to get them out into production, but it is quite a lengthy process, and it's quite a technical process as well, so... You know, mm -hmm. that's where I am with it at the moment. But yeah, that one is out and then the others will, will slowly follow. Mm, very interesting. Okay. Yeah. Right, just to very, very briefly, I say to people quite a lot, our companion animals are our teachers. Yes, our mm, te I agree. Teaching us unconditional self-love first, then you can give it out. And they give yeah. it out in full measure. Love and loyalty. But you can't unless you've got it for yourself first. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm no dog I've got two rescue cats and they're brother and sister and they're lovely they sleep with each other and they're dear souls but I love dogs as well and I'm always on Grange Prom it's a dog well when it's not on this silly lockdown thing the dog walkers paradise and I've always got little gravy bones and I ask them, <laughs> I I, I've got my little stock phrases as well if a chap goes past a dog I was like, oh, what a lovely dog shame about the owner isn't it <laughs> I laugh. Or, or I say, oh, don't you get cross when you, when your dog gets more attention than you do? <laughs> Always the way, though, isn't it? Dog walk oh, the you know, the first, and I remember being outside Downing, not Downing Street, the Westminster uh, House of Parliament, and there were police with the guns. There. And I said, hang on, come here a minute, you know, talking through the wire, the, the um, railings. I said, I'm a retired school teacher. I said, 27 years, I get government pensions, so I'm not, you know, I'm not out to cause trouble. Why are, is an animal therapy used to help rehabilitate young offenders? Or even not? we couldn't answer. Is mm -hmm. it interesting? Because it would. They're the most. They can help rehabilitate. I mean, look at the Birdman of Alcatraz. That was years ago, wasn't it? And yeah. you know, I mean, they're just and the little and what really 
fascinates me is interspecies relationships where animals can of different species can form these relationships like a little um little kitty that was this has probably been out on the internet a little kitten was abandoned and a crow looked after it and it was filmed and it used to get food for it and then when the kitten was adopted every morning when the door opened there was the crow there ready to oh. go off it's beautiful you know. isn't it it just ma it just makes you feel that there's lots of wonderful things going on in the world and and i and, and pat actually are enjoying a daily dose of the doggy daycare place in uh in, in australia that they it, it, they've created a doggy daycare and they've got like acres and acres of land and this mm -hmm. young man luke and his family he was in the military and then suffered terrible ptsd and had no help with it from the authorities and he was left to his own devices oh gosh mm. nine years isn't enough to get battered and blown up no you've got to be 12. anyway mm. so he found that dogs gave him the most beautiful fantastic mm. you know healing and he's giving it back and if ever you want to watch something that cheers the you know cheers you up uh it's the doggy daycare they put their videos up every uh, almost every day then they're in Australia so good for them and that's a lovely note on which to draw to yeah. a close and thank you very much Penny yeah. and Pat for coming into our new latte lounge of the eating <laughs> <laughs> I like it no, thank and I you hope very much. we will yeah, have a latte next time and I hope that we can do it again because this is a lovely way to share just in yeah. a nice bite-sized piece so I'll let you know when I put this up uh, and again muchas gracias and uh We'll catch you again, hopefully within the next uh, few weeks. And uh, if there's anything that you want to, um, you know, put on or speak about particularly, then let me know and we'll make that our focus. So for now, it's been homeopathy and uh, the mercury poisoning and what we found has been really helpful. So thanks very much, everybody, for listening. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank nice to see you, Pat. Yeah. Thank you, Penny. Yeah, you. Don't forget, we deserve lots of treats. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, take right. care. Yeah. Until next time in the Latte Lounge. Bye. Bye. How, how do we leave? <laughs> uh, it says end meeting. I'm going to end meeting for all. There we go.